So as a lot of you know, in February of 2019, the team and I traveled to Isla Fernandina, Fernandina Island, to look for the one and only fern, the Fernandina Island tortoise, who we found after 114 years of being presumed extinct, truly the rarest animal in the world with only one known in existence. But what a lot of you didn't get to see was some of the unbelievably breathtaking things that I saw from when I stepped foot on Fernandina Island to the moment that we left. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys some unbelievable, never before seen footage of incredible creatures from Fernandina Island. So here we go. So when we first hopped off the little dinghy, the little rubber skiff, uh, there was a beach on one side, there was nesting sea turtles, but then just to the right, what you saw was this rocky rookery. And I think in the show, we sort of like head straight out into the island to look for the tortoise. You guys know me, you know if I'm seeing a new piece of habitat that's different to anything I've ever seen before, I have to stop and go check it out. So I immediately dogleg the entire team, we turned just to the right, and there was this big rocky shallow area which was a rookery for Galapagos fur seals. Look at these babies, they're so cute. Look at their ridiculously adorable eyes. They're so cute, they're almost sad. They have they have take me home eyes. And they're just I mean, they're so unafraid of humans and inquisitive and adorable. Look at how they come up to check me out. These animals have absolutely no fear of human beings. They have no predators on land. So over generational time, they have lost the instinct to run away from things that approach them on land. So here they sit, this one's going back to sleep, that one's going over to suckle for mama. Look at this guy coming out of the cave, look at his face! Oh, hi sweetie, look at him! Hi! I don't want to touch him, you know, I don't want to by any chance give him anything that I could be carrying, but just being here this close and seeing these unbelievable little faces, now they're relaxed that I'm sitting here. Oh my god, this is just a dream come true. You guys, I don't know how else to put this. There is nothing cuter in the entire world than a baby Galapagos fur seal. These animals were unbelievable. Now I know what you're thinking. I've seen pinnipeds, I've seen seals and sea lions. I've swim with, swam with California sea lions. They're not that cool. They're pests, they steal our fish, whatever. Wrong, okay? I feel that way about certain species of pinnipeds when they're stealing my yellowtail off my spear. I do not feel that way about Galapagos fur seals. These things are literally the cutest animals on planet Earth. The biggest, doughiest eyes, the softest little furry faces with their cute little whiskers. And this rookery, what's so unique about it, where they live, they have no natural predators on land at all. Here in California, there's bears, there's mountain lions, uh, there's coyotes that'll steal a pup, whatever. The Galapagos Islands, there's nothing, no predators whatsoever. So over evolutionary time, they have lost all fear of a land-based predator. These are wild animals, and this is this is how easy it must have been for sailors to come in and collect them, because you literally couldn't be less afraid of me. One thing that's so interesting about the Galapagos fur seals, and even when you're seeing this massive population of them in this video here, is that the females only ever give birth to one pup. They have the lowest fertility rate of any seal or sea lion in the world, which has securely placed them on the endangered species list because they're so susceptible to hunting. Any form of overhunting or habitat destruction could lead to complete population collapse. But I don't want to harp on the negative. Look at these adorable little things. Look at these eyes and the whiskers and the tiny little flippers. I mean, these are some of the most adorable creatures ever seen. And as I'm sitting there with these seals, which is already mind blowing, I see an animal that I've truly wanted to see for my entire life. The living embodiment of Godzilla, the marine iguana. So right there on the rocks, there are these big jetting rocks. You see the silhouettes of these little dinosaurs. They're spiky backs, they're weird, bumpy heads sticking out, and that silhouette belongs to these marine iguanas. These animals are the only saltwater dwelling lizard on Earth. And what they will do is hang out on these rocks and when they get nice and toasty from being out in the sun, they'll dive into the ocean and graze on marine algae. And so I'm just enamored with these little living dinosaurs, and all of a sudden you see these volcanoes shooting out of their faces, and what that is, is it's salt excretion. So because these are the only ocean diving iguanas in the world, they're eating seaweed, which of course is full of salt. And so they're ingesting tons and tons of salt, more than their body can process. So in order to get rid of that salt, they're excreting it by 
shooting it out of their noses in these little water spout rockets of saline solution, which is the salt coming out of them. And so as I'm watching these guys shoot the saline out of their noses and sit there, I had to get closer. So you see, I get down on my belly and I start belly crawling to act like a Galapagos fur seal that we've just seen mixed amongst them to get nice and close. Now, these iguanas are not that dumb. They could tell I wasn't a chubby white fur seal. Instead, I was a normal guy, but they still let me get incredibly close because once again, like the fur seals, they have very few natural predators. So I was able to just lie down on the rocks in these tide pools in amongst these animals and just be enamored by one of the coolest creatures I've ever seen, not just on the land, but like this footage you're seeing right here of them diving underwater and grazing on the algae. This is footage that Mitch shot while we were cruising around on the island hiking and he got to have the, the snorkeling vacation with the iguanas. So as I'm lying in amongst these unbelievable little Godzillas, uh, I do see the one and only predator uh, that is native to the topside area of the islands, and that is the Galapagos hawk. Instantly, I think this is a good sign because these Galapagos hawks, these endemic species, birds of prey, eat marine iguanas, land iguanas, and you guessed it, baby tortoises, right? So if we can somewhat follow this Galapagos hawk, it's unlikely, but it's possible that it could lead us to an area with juvenile tortoises. So I'm cruising near to it, I'm following it, and it lands on this little scrubby cactus tree thing. And sure enough, I get to see up close one of the coolest birds of prey in the entire world that only occurs right here in the Galapagos. Look up there, there's a big, beautiful Galapagos hawk who's just landed in this tree to perch. Now he's a big native bird of prey to all of the Galapagos Islands, and an animal like that is the perfect predator for a juvenile tortoise. As they hatch out, dig out of their burrows and their little juveniles, he would swoop down and eat one up in a heartbeat. And the fact that he's here in this vegetated ravine, on the hunt, on the prowl, looking for something to eat, is a really good sign. And so I get up close and personal with this beautiful Galapagos hawk, follow it a little bit. Of course, it's not leading me to tortoises yet. I'm still heading towards that green patch that I identified. If you haven't seen, watch it in the show. It's on Max and all these other things now. What I do see instead next is, the marine iguanas are probably the coolest. I don't want to take away from them, but if there is a second coolest iguana ever, it's these guys. Look at this absolutely stunning large female land iguana. Look how she's getting a little bit defensive. She wags her tail and those brilliant yellow colors. So here you see I'm approaching this female and she's in breeding colors. Like she's nice and colored up, but nothing compared to the males. Check out this picture of the male. But checking out this female, what's so cool is she is hanging out in this area and you can see where she's dug a cave out. This is likely her nesting area and still very chilled, very relaxed with no real natural predators. So she's hanging out, she's kind of keeping an eye on me and going, I don't know if this guy could be a threat or not. Does a little tail wag, which is like an aggressive body display. And I'm just looking at this thing and thinking how insane is that? Knowing that they get up to 25 pounds, which is a big lizard, and they hang out and they have these crazy behaviors where the males will headbutt and clash to fight for the females and uh, be really, really aggressive and territorial. And the females will cruise around and build a den. They'll dig a hole and lay anywhere to up to about 25 eggs to incubate and hatch these crazy little babies. I mean, this is like, it's like a land that time forgot getting to see all of these weird living dinosaurs like these land iguanas, these marine iguanas, even the Galapagos hawk and the fur seals. It's truly just a fantastic place. I get it. I understand why Charles Darwin fell in love with it. I understand how it helped him formulate his ideas and theories. And seeing this iguana was one of the last big animals before you know what happened before we found Fern, that big moment that redefined wildlife television, and of course that moment that re-engaged with conservation and spread so much hope into the hearts of millions worldwide as we found this incredible animal, myself and the rangers and the team from the Galapagos. So anyway, I just thought you guys would enjoy this little sneak peek into some of the other incredible creatures that did get their well-deserved screen time on, uh, on the TV show. So I hope you guys enjoyed.